Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to do something slightly different. You've had my 88 films and Arrow releases and today I'm going to do something that I haven't seen on anyone else's uh, vlogs uh, which is Networks, the British Film Collection. Now as you can see at the moment I've got their Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons Volume 1. That's not a film you say? No it's not but they don't only do films they do TV series and other stuff as well. A lot of comedy, a lot of um, drama. Uh, I just thought I'd like to mention this. They've got all four seasons out now and this is the Blu-ray and unlike a lot of stuff shot in the 60s this was all shot on film and these Blu-rays look absolutely stunning. Um, if you remember Captain Scarlet, check them out, they are brilliant. It features the original artwork from the end of the title credits. Um, brilliant. I, I've shown this to my uh, son, who's uh, 15, and he thoroughly enjoyed them. He thought they were really, really good. Uh, but next up, let's have a look at the British film. And first up is H.G. Wells' Things to Come. This isn't in the British film imprint because I don't think that existed at the time. I think that came out a lot later. There is now a Blu-ray version of this which is in the British film imprint and I think this is the first thing I bought from Network. It's a two disc edition. It has a booklet but nowhere to put the booklet. It flops about all the time. Um, as you can see densely written, nicely illustrated. Um, this is a huge British film at the time, trying to rival anything that came out of Hollywood. Directed by William Cameron Menzies, I think. Um, it's got a whole host of special features. This is the longest version available, and this was made in 1936 and starts off with the Second World War. And it goes through up until the apocalypse and beyond. Uh, stunning pr production design and well worth a see if you've never seen it. Guilt is my shadow. This is from March 1950. It's a quite a good little thriller. Filmed mostly in my home county of Devon, although it's filmed in the north, not the south, where I live. Um, on the outskirts of the little village of Welford in Devon lives a young farmer. He lives alone, undisturbed by strangers, and he prefers it that way. But when his nephew arrives on the run from a police, a series of tragic events is set in motion. Uh, the ending I didn't like, but then it's it, due to the the times in, in the 1950s she couldn't have got away with it it's today it would have been a, a, a totally different ending it's it's a nice thriller nothing exceptional but this is the thing with the British film imprint they're just taking films that people probably haven't even seen since they were first released forgotten gems most of them Uh, and now from September 58, Chain of Events. A chain of events that started with a man without a bus fare and ended in blackmail and violence. Another pretty effective thriller. Um, pointing out with sort of a class divide really on this. Um, the middle class person is believed whereas the, uh, the working class person isn't and it is pretty good directed by Gerald Thomas who um, yeah went on to direct a lot of the what uh, they carry on films oh we're into color now this is from February 1966 actually certificate X and this is death is a woman which is something that's riding on the coattails of the James Bond phenomena
it's not a bad film. An undercover agent is sent to investigate narcotic smuggling on a sun-drenched Mediterranean island. Uh, as you can tell by the poster artwork, very influenced by Thunderball. Good little film. Um, well worth seeking out that one. And next up from February 1970 is probably Roger Moore's finest performance. A great film. Basil Deirdre's The Man Who Haunted Himself. I remember seeing this in our makeshift cinema at Sulcombe and it was fantastic. Uh, this is the only dual format I've got from British films and I love these ultra thin cases they all come in ultra thin cases apart from things to come uh, it takes up a lot less shelf space some of the original poster art this is a very good film I really enjoyed that so when I saw that network were putting it out I had to get it if you've not seen this very very good and I think this was the film that um, made the Bond producers think that yeah he could take he could carry off the character although he plays Bond a lot lighter than the person in this film and the last of the the DVDs is from September 1973 it's a Cert X 15 now although that would have been 18 back then is the final program designed written and directed by Robert Faust this is a weird film uh, yeah you gotta see it really <laughs> um, yeah it's it's right out there I don't know what they were smoking at the time but um, I shall probably have to watch it a second time really but definitely a bit of an odd one And now on to the Blu-rays. I will try and put a link in the description to Network because they're well worth checking out. Um, I've just got to figure out how to do that. And this is a British International Pictures production from 1933. Certificate A, this is the most recent that I've got from the British film. And it's on Secret Service. Looks thrilling, doesn't it? Some of the original poster art really good obviously a black and white so for some reason elsewhere it's known as spy 77 well not for some reason i mean that's that's who they're trying to track down um the lady in it is called greta nissen and i think she was quite big at the time um quite an attractive lady who wears quite a few different frocks throughout the uh, running time of this film it's not bad it's just a bit slow really um, but yeah I quite enjoyed it it could have done with a, a sort of someone like Alfred Hitchcock directing it really though and give it a bit more pace and from November 1937 one of my favorite Hitchcock films Young and Innocent now I've got a British films box set of Alfred Hitchcock films which this is in on DVD and it's pretty bad the amount of digital noise reduction on it just makes everything smeary this one they've gone back to the original film elements and done it from there they've done a bit of restoration but not anything too major unfortunately um, as it's considered a lesser film I think it's brilliant love it uh, typical Hitchcock innocent man on the run uh, the ending with an incredible crane shot that's in a ballroom and it starts from outside the ballroom pans or tracks right across up to an extreme close up of the murderer's twitching face I think this is great if you've never seen it give it a go I really really love that one and then from November 1966 is a bulldog drum and mystery deadlier than the male 
starring Richard Johnson, who I think uh, original Bond director Terence Young wanted as Bond, and I think he would have made a bloody good Bond, actually. Um, this is very sort of tongue-in-cheek. He's meant to be a um, insurance investigator, but he gets away with a lot. The only thing I would say is don't watch the trailer before watching the film because it it gives us away who the bad guy is and not in any specific way but it's it's a reveal shot and you know the language of cinema you know that oh that's the bad guy so well worth a watch just don't watch the trailer first and from 1970 another X certificate and this one is a hammer horror and Countess Dracula starring the gorgeous Ingrid Pitt. Nigel Green's in this. He is brilliant. I love him. He's anything he's in. He's, he was in the previous film, Deadlier Than The, the Male. Uh, this is all good. Uh, this one actually has some programme notes. A few of them do. Not all of them. It's, it's quite good. And I must admit, when I rewatched this, I thought, ooh, it's not as gory as I remember. And it's not as gory as it could have been. And I think there's a, in the interview with Ingrid Pitt, she, she was disappointed at the lack of blood and gore, actually. So there you go. But well worth checking out. Next up from October 71, another X certificate and another Hammer Horror, Twins of Evil. This is a great little vampire film. Um, Peter Cushion as a... Uh, what was he? A Puritan? I don't know whether he's a preacher or just a Puritan, but... Um, yeah. Definitely well worth a, a watch. Next up from January 75 is Ransom, starring Sean Connery uh, and Ian McShane. This, I quite enjoyed this. He, he's meant to be a Scandinavian security chief, but he's still got his Scottish accent, as usual. It, it's a good thriller, but it sort of reminded me that it more of a, um, a high-quality... TV film than actually a theatrical release, but I do believe it was released. Yeah, it says original theatrical exhibition January 1975, so but it does have that sort of TV movie feel about it. But if you've not seen it, check it out. And from June 1978, Richard Burton in the Medusa touch. I love this film. I, it's, it's great. You've got to watch this. Um, what happens when a man possesses the power to cause catastrophe at will? Great film. What can I say? You know, you you need, really need to see. It. Directed by Jack Gold, um, Richard Burton, Lee Remick, Harry Andrews, and uh, an early appearance by Sherlock Holmes, Jeremy Brett. Great film. Watch it. I remember seeing this one in the cinema. Um, March 1980 this came out. Double A certificate, so 15. And uh, this is Silver Dream Racer. Uh, I love motorbikes. Uh, I love any film that has motorbike chases in. And this this is a, a pretty solid drama. Um, David Essex is pretty good in it. Lots of racing. It's, it's really well done. Um, it also has the um, the American ending, which they keep showing on, on British TV now, where they freeze frame just before what actually happens. And so you've got a happy ending. Uh, very good film. I loved it. And my last... Blu-ray in the British film imprint at the moment. This is from April 1980. X certificate. This 
caused a lot of furore at the time. It's Nicholas Rogue's Bad Timing with Art Garfunkel and the gorgeous Teresa Russell. This is a very good film. Unfortunately, no booklet with this one. Um, like most of Nick Rogue's films, you need to see it a couple of times to get everything out of it. It is um, it basically traces the volatile relationship between two Americans in 1970s Vienna. Uh, there is a scene in it that caused a hell of a uproar at the time. Um, but if you like Nick Rogue films and you've not seen this one, I suggest you check it out. Um, it's not for everyone, and yeah, yeah, it says there, um, you know, it is an 18 certificate, uh, as it says, suitable only for people who are 18, yeah, blah blah. It's a good, good film. I enjoyed it. So hopefully any of you who don't know about the British film imprint will now know and can check out and they've got hundreds of films, most of them you probably wouldn't have heard of, uh, but well worth checking out. I'm pretty sure you'll find something there to tickle the old taste buds. And uh, thank you for watching, if you like the video hit like and um, please subscribe and hopefully there'll be more content coming sh very very shortly thank you for watching